so that was the only thing I'm doing, but I didn't see where to start them off like that. That probably would have been easier because it's kind of been a struggle. Mm -hmm. He'll do this. Uh, yeah. Or he did this first, you know, <laughs> but he was having mm -hmm. fun with it, so. So again, that, that, that rule, that 80% success, 20% challenge. Build on success, build on success, build the confidence, build the self-esteem. And, and then, instead of creating a habit of resistance, instead of you know, launching them on the path to being diagnosed with uh, oppositional defiant disorder two years later down the road, okay, oh, when, what ha how did that happen? Oh, oh I don't know. Nobody, you know, nobody asked, like, how, did, how all of a sudden did, we move, did this, get, this oppositional defiance thing get created? No kid is born oppositional defiant. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure mom was born that way. No. They can be born with a mismatching strategy. They can, I, I think they, that's possible. day one, it's just... He's a mismatch. My daughter's two years old. She's a mismatcher. I... <laughs> She's a mismatcher. I, I still don't think it's nature. I think it's, um, I think in the womb they hear the arguments or something. Um, I, I mean, that's just my personal yeah, opinion. I have no idea, but, but he's always been just, no, a, no, no, no. He's a mismatcher. If you yeah. say yes, she, he's, he'll say yeah. no. If you say black, he'll say white. Yeah, of course. So, so you probably don't want to do this next exercise. <laughs> and I think it'll be fun. Oh, really? Oh. Reverse psychology. Yeah. That's mine. Even but it's got to be good. It's got to be yeah. real. It's got to be, be subtle. It's very subtle. Exactly. If I'm obvious, no. <clears throat> it doesn't work at all. And if you can get them when they're, you know, younger. Like, the right. younger you're you get them, the Earth better. Is so young right now. The younger you get mine, them, the better. And if you say, if you if you do something and then say, oh, no, you're not ready for this yet. That, then that's going to push got them. Yes. yes. You've got them. Um, uh, you know, I... I well, there's certain stages too, like when you're two years exactly. Old. That's oh, a whole yeah. other thing. Right, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's when you're that's finding your ego. And you know, nine. if you want to, if you want to understand two-year-olds, here's my here's my my philosophical moment. Okay, my 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 my, my, my esoteric moment. If you want to understand two-year-olds, go look in the Old Testament. Okay, go to go to like go past Genesis, get up to like Exodus or Leviticus, and read the stories. And just put your two-year-old in the stories, okay? And that's the behavior and the mentality of a two-year-old. That's that's just my opinion. Um, it's defiance. It's you know you got you you're finding your own. You're walking Serving away. Serving their independence. Your, your independence, sibling. You know, just nothing. Nothing's right. Yes. <laughs> um, and that's what childhood is about. It's it's your you know you they keep leaving these these blissful states and have the they have to like figure things out for themselves you know yes. create this universe it's very complex um so um somebody was bringing up meds on the on the facebook I, I was on for a little bit and and i mentioned this story when my son was like probably about two he had to take eye drops he had, we took him to the doctor he had an eye infection and I knew this was not going to fly. I mean, he's like, he'll like fight you to put ice on a, right. you know, or, or medicine on a cut or anything. So I knew this was going to be a battle. This is, this is half of ADD parenting is knowing what's going to happen before it happens. You can't wait until after the fact, because then it's like, you know, the horse is out of the barn. It's done. You just wait until next time and see if you can do better. But, but I knew this was going to be a fight. So my wife gave me the medicine while we're sitting in bed and I'm I take the eye drops and and I, I don't know if I took it but I just like faked it you know like wow whoo can I have the medicine my, my, my medicine no that's not for you sorry but I want to take the medicine no 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 and he was like, and then the next night we did the same thing, you know. And um, and he's like, I want a medicine. I want to. I want to be like that. Are you sure? You positive? You you do you need it? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see your eyes. All right. All right. Come here. All right. You gotta hold still. And I was like, I put it, I put the drop, drop, two drops in his eyes, and he did the whole. It was exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> this is the next one. Ah, all right, that's it. No more. 
Oh, no. No, no, no more. No more. You take something away, and it's like, they want it. They want it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Okay. So, so again, notice the intent. We're going we're gonna to meet them where they are, and then we're going we're gonna to use the, that mind-body connection, okay, to increase this communication across the corpus callosum. We want to get left brain, right brain working together. And that, that does a, a lot of things to the, to the way we think and the way we process information. So, question. Mm -hmm. Like, you suggest we do these before school, I'm assuming, something like that. How long does it affect, kind of, I mean, does it make it through the whole day? Of no. Or anything no, like no, that? no, 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 not in the beginning, not in the beginning. I mean, in the very, very beginning, you're, you're going to do the exercise for two minutes, and the effect is going to last for two minutes and 15 seconds. <laughs> and, you, and you practice it. Because right. remember, the body, it responds. So you do it the next day, you get three minutes out of it. The next day, oh, five minutes. You know? So it's just like any exercise, you build it, and it, you get results as you go, I mean, yes. it builds up. And yes, so in the beginning, I recommend at least t the focusing or stress reduction exercises at least twice a day, and usually two of them, usually two, two of them, ones. two exercises. So, so you're really still talking about four to, let's say, four minutes a day to, to begin to make a change. Now, if you can get them to do it for an hour a day, which I, in some cases, I've had to do this, okay? I've had kids on doing their exercises for two minutes a day, twice a day, uh, or four minutes a day, twice a day, and nothing. Nothing, no real results. So, and that was, and I was pretty patient. That was probably, I worked with them for about three months. Do you think it's relevant very, to their very age little or result. something like that? Hmm? Were, were they in the same age group, the ones you didn't have as much? Do you think that's relevant? Of you know, if you start when they were younger, or if you get one when they're already, you know, older, if, or is it just you know, levels of ADHD or my whatever? My experience, it's, it's anecdotal, I, so I, I don't have enough of, I don't, I don't know how have enough right. of a group to compare, right. to make that, that comparison, but I did work with a couple of kids, um, particularly this year, seven, eight years old, and I noticed that at least two of them did not make progress on the two or four minutes a day. Over the summertime, I brought them in for an entire week. I worked with them for at least an hour or two every day for a week. Serious cross crawl, serious uh, 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 different exercises during that time every day. And at the end of the week, they were totally different. I mean, it was it was it was marked progress at the end of that week. So you just got to judge each kid by their own mm -hmm. results and go from there. And yeah. What yeah. I've done, I don't know if it's right or not, but he'll be fighting with his two-year-old. Mm -hmm. I know if I sit there and try to tell him whatever, he's not listening because he's already mad. So right. we've we've actually stopped and did those. Right. Yeah. And yeah. it calmed him down, and then That's good. he was fine. But I didn't know. I mean. Anything he that distracts out, from the so fight is always yeah, a good yeah. thing. Yeah, and so when, you know, <laughs> and this stuff is so outside the box, yeah, especially in the beginning, and and sometimes you can really shock them. Like like I can I give some, I tell this to parents like, um, it's like wow you're you're really upset right now. Let's go do some cross crawls. Or let's go do some balloon juggling, which is next actually. And he thought he was gonna get in trouble, and then when I said that, right. he went. Okay. okay, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you're not making him wrong. Right. It's, you, it's, see, if you're upset, I mean, my wife knows if I, you know, if I'm upset, don't make me wrong. Right. That is not right. a good time to no. make me wrong. Once I calm down. <laughs> then you have a rational conversation. Now make me wrong, okay? You know, you were a jerk. Oh, yeah, I was. Right. But don't, don't. Not in the moment. Not in the yeah. moment. No, no that's listening. crazy. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And it it's just makes it escalate from there. Well, like the example of yesterday you were saying, they... Yeah, we used the mother said one thing, but the child was totally different. Uh huh. Always. <laughs> and I think they process our words differently. Is a lot of it because my son cannot understand verbal instructions ever, and we will no. fight till so, the end of time. Even though I was there in the classroom, I heard the instructions. No, that's not what she said. I was there. And then I have a paper that says it again. No, right. no, they said to do this. Right. And you cannot tell them that they're wrong. They won't believe it because they're positive they heard it correctly. Yes. And that's so here, here's, another, here's another beginning exercise. 
Oh, you guys go. Grab a couple. Oops, a couple more for you. Um, so, just one. Just, just one. one. For now. I might pass it out if you make with you all four. <laughs> now, this is a nice one because you can control it, control the size. The younger kids, you make this big, Huge. big balloon right. that's going to float in the air forever. With the older kids, you make it smaller. So somebody make one big and somebody make one small. So with the older kids, you can, and I, again, I'm talking from four to seven, maybe. I just pulled back in my mouth. <laughs> so, so, and all we're going to do is just, yeah, when they're smaller, they're going to come down fast, whereas a big one, Float for a while, and you have time to it's think gonna, and oh, process there you go. how long. So then that gives them more time to process of which hand to do. But mm -hmm. yeah, so this is the basic left left brain, right brain. Um, notice my focus is on the ball, right? Not on my hands. <laughs> and then, as as another intermediate step, you can begin to make it more complicated. You can do two right, two left. The back of your hand, the back of your hand, your thumbs. Most kids want to do their head. Right. Um, so, so sometimes what, what I'll do too is I'll call it out. I'll say left, you might want to go with the right, right first. head, <laughs> left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, head. So. What you want to avoid is get it, them get one getting too crazy, okay? Uh, yeah. Because yeah, once they get we around that, then they start. Yeah, it's a bigger one. Right. Kids Which kids all fun. love doing that. It's always a favorite okay. game. Okay. Yeah, so the fun. next one, we're gonna have to put everybody to work again. <laughs> so I'm try some more. And here's a little break. Oh. So we can get around the table. We have these at home. Actually, I got them for Oriental Trading. A huge box, and they're filled with like flour or something. They're just balloons. Yeah. And we, um, we got him for him to squeeze as a stress ball, and then he decided, oh, we're going to juggle. So we found a YouTube video of how to juggle, and he mm -hmm. taught himself to juggle. And Perfect. Yeah, it was good. Perfect. So, let's find a couple funnels. <laughs> I get this right. So it's just one balloon over another with a sandwich bag. Twist it up with about a quarter cup of rice. wouldn't let me steal her measuring cups. So, <laughs> so here we go. There's, um, just fill it up with rice to the, to the line. And we're going to make three juggling balls each. You get to take home. We can practice tonight bags. and we can come back tomorrow and show off our skills. Yeah. <laughs> you want to... Or you can come around to this side too. There you go. Now, how do you get the balloon around? The, what's that? How do you get the balloon around the bag? At this point? Okay. Let me grab a couple more pairs of scissors. Now you cut off the tops. Yeah. And you, you cut off the tops. Stretch them over. So here's what, okay, so you there's cut what off the, the hole. There's what neck. the balloon's like. So you cut off the neck. Sorry. 
and I will take about a quarter cup of rice, pour it into the bag. Usually get it down into one corner, and then just twist it and what? fold it back That's over. I can sworn that was fully sealed. Whatever happened there? <laughs> Maybe I ripped it. And then take the balloon and fit it over the top of the bag. Just stretch it over. Oh, you just okay. then you tie it off? No, no, no. Yeah, really? No. Nope. And, the... and then just put uh, one over the other way. A balloon? Okay. So I'll cut the neck off of this one. For me? Thank you. <laughs> I also wanted a grape stem. <laughs> and now I put it on the opposite way. And voila, juggling ball. <laughs> and just keep the balloons away from little kids. Obviously, it's a choking hazard. Do you hear that, Missy? <laughs> And you'll notice that it doesn't take much of a variance. If you put a little extra rice in, they're going to be a little harder and firmer. And if you leave a just a little bit less rice, they're going to be a little more squishy. Thank you for doing that. So whatever your per per preference she is. She doesn't want to do the balloon part. That's what she's doing. <laughs> she oh. She's smart. <laughs> So I'm just going to move these off the floor because we have a baby walking around. So when did you when did you do the juggling thing? Over the summer, you know, we're just bored. Oh, how fun! Just, you know, the other day I bought a whole bunch of tennis balls for the new puppy and stuff, and so he grabbed those and started juggling them. Too. I'm like, oh, that's good. I can't do those. Those are too huge. I need the little tiny, you know. So, and he gets like that. He'll get stuck on something. Like he'll he'll get hooked on. You know, once he gets in that zone, he just can't stop really. It's almost like it becomes a new addiction, and mm -hmm. he gets stuck in that mode for a while. And right. Unless you can juggle four. I can juggle ten. <laughs> I can juggle two. <laughs> it also amazes me when you go see those shows where they're juggling giant things like chainsaws and and I think I can't even juggle a ball, you know? It's <laughs> Have you ever seen somebody juggle a chainsaw? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. My one, one that I was really impressed with was, was a chainsaw, a bowling ball, yeah, and a ping pong ball. Was that a renaissance fair? I think it was. I, I saw a guy and, yeah, he did the bowling ball. I was like, really? I can barely lift those to begin with. And you're <laughs> juggling it. It's... <laughs> Soon. Bet you oh, she catches three. on quicker than us. <laughs> oh, I do have peas parch hot in here. Okay, page 39. Good. I think we all knew that one. It's okay. <laughs> She's got the
spice thing. And... Looks like lemons. Yeah. I just stick them in the bowl in the middle of the table and pretend like it's just a bowl of lemons later. And... <laughs> Look black, decorative. Black gives you lemons juggle with them. Yeah. Yes. There you go. <laughs> He's going to use that. You should hurry and copyright it, then you can charge it. There you go. Life gives you lemons. Learn to juggle. Right? So then when I had my son, I was like starting all over. <laughs> all right. We so, all, are we all armed? Yeah. Do you ever find the stress? Does this ever help for them to squeezing the stress sure. from things? And sure, anything like that. Yeah. You know, right, but you know, I found with my son. It's I tough to write, though, while you're squeezing people. Those, those. <laughs> yeah, if they're ball-shaped, we're going to have to throw them because we can only just sit there so long. I mean, because... Yeah. And I, if I'm you can take them apart, we will dismantle right. them. Even though, well, I want to see what was inside. The same as the last one. Yeah, yeah but you know, I just still needed to. <laughs> I remember we had a training all day and I squeezed something and I squeezed it so <laughs> Yeah. It was all day. I was just like, squeeze it, squeeze it. I don't know what it was. Yeah. All right. So, everybody up. And we're all going to start with just one ball. Just one. So just put, her, put everything down except for one ball. This is what we'll have the kids do as well. And but if I already have them juggling, then it's okay since he taught. Oh himself, yeah, that's okay. Just, that's okay. Yeah. So we're just gonna go back and forth. <laughs> and after, if they is if they can start doing this. I'm going to direct their focus to the turn. Keep your focus on where, where it hits the top and starts to come back down. Like a magician, we don't want to be looking at our hands. It's a pretty consistent throw, just a little bit above you a little bit above your head, not too high. All right. <laughs> Next, we'll pick up two. Now it's going to be the same motion, but we're going to do one after another. And to help, here's what here's a way we can help get the the rhythm. We're going to march in place. Oh my. Just and notice you're we're doing the cross crawling again motion, right? Except for you. I know I won't. <laughs> And then you. <laughs> there you go. Opposite, opposite. So get nice and comfortable. Hoop, hoop, a little faster. One, two, one, two, one, two. And then what I'll start doing is a very repetitive one, two, toss, toss. Don't worry about catching it. Just one, two, toss, toss. Are you trying to switch hands or just straight up? With the We're going to switch. You're going to switch, ideally. Okay, I, I'm not okay. focused on that in the okay, beginning. Not, we're not focused on catching it at all. Okay. Not focused on catching it. <laughs> Remember, our focus is up here. One, two, toss, toss. One, two, one, two. A little, a little bit quicker over here. By the door. One, two, one, two, two, toss, toss, catch, catch. Two, toss, toss, catch, catch. Toss, 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 toss. I'm surprised we haven't hit you in the head yet. Toss, toss. Now 
if you can, I see if you can <laughs> see if you can switch. Toss, toss, and catch him in the opposite hand. Toss, toss, and if you got the rhythm, you can stop marching. One, two, toss, toss. So we keep our focus up. Keep our focus up on the turn. Oh, gotcha. On the turn. <laughs> hey, little baby. That's it. Hey, I did it twice. Woo! New record. I did. That's because I was watching what you said. Mm -hmm. The turn. Oh, See, I have trouble was, letting go of slow, my other hand. Yeah. Yeah. One at a time. This one doesn't want to let go. So here's what you want to do. Toss, toss. I don't know what it is. One, that's two. Really that's it. That's good rhythm. Okay. Good rhythm. <laughs> one, two, toss, <laughs> toss. <laughs> One, two, toss, toss. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now notice, notice, <laughs> notice, <laughs> notice, if your focus is out here or down, your balls tend to go out. That's yeah, is that what's happening? This one, right? this one does. That's what I noticed. And that's another one. If you, if, you, if you watch, if all your attention is on your arm, if it's divided, the first ball goes up and the next ball goes out. Like yeah. That. <laughs> Let's do that. So, as we lose, as we stop focusing on one hand or the other, right. if we start, if we stop chasing, which is what sympathetic, sympathetic donut, you're chasing every little thing. So as we as we move away from that and get our focus up here, chin up, chin up slightly above horizontal. Our eyes, the spot I'm focusing on is right above my head, right here. And I'm kind of throwing the ball just a little bit to the side of that spot. Toss, toss. So chin up, chin up. Toss, toss. Toss, toss. I in there too. Come on. <laughs> no, <don't. laughs> I'm not feeling it. I can't tell. There's another one. You're not allowed to say I can't. You can say, you can say, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> it's and I'm finding this very difficult. <laughs> I haven't done that yet. Yeah. Don't think about catching it. Just toss it up in the air. Just one, two. Toss, toss. Toss, toss. Toss, toss. So let's get a little, little faster <laughs> rhythm going. Ready? One, two. Don't think about catching. Just one, two. Toss, toss. One, two. Toss, toss. Left, right. Left, right. It's hard. The left hand locks up, doesn't it? Yeah. It just mm -hmm. doesn't want to let go. <laughs> a little quicker. Left, right. Toss, toss. Maybe if you start with your left, that'll force your left to throw. And your right will probably just do it just because, you know. It will help if you start with the same hand every time. Right. Left, right. I think I'd start with my How about right, start with left. Yeah, I do right. too. But sure, left hand was locking up and went and throw. So I thought if you started with left, that maybe you know. Uh huh. Yeah. Very good. Wait till he adds the third. That's too awesome. My son and I always there doing this, and then we'll start doing our <laughs> circus music. We'll go, <laughs> All right. Ready? Sometimes it helps. It distracts enough that you're not so focused on the ball. And you did watch the ball. <sighs> I think I'm more worried about catching it. Oh, yes. That's, I think that's a common. Because otherwise, you gotta go get it. Oh, it's okay. it's, it's <laughs> more work. <laughs> One of the other things I'll do to help anchor 
the the behaviors and whatever whatever we're trying to accomplish is by always putting on one of my CDs with basically the same background music um, or similar background music. Uh, most of them have um, they're layered in the music with subliminal messaging for different issues, reading, writing, focus, attention, stress reduction, organization, whatever, um, as well as the binaural beats, the brain training. Now, if you're not listening with headphones, you're not getting the benefits of the brain entrainment, but you can still get the benefits of the anchoring effect with the music and also the subliminal messaging. You don't have to be listening to the head with headphones to get those. So what are your thoughts on biofeedback? Oh, um, do, you, do you know anyone personally that's ever done that or anything? Or I know people that have done it. I know people that have had their kids do it. Right. The, the problem is, one, it's pretty darn expensive. Yes. <laughs> um, they, you know, most of the people I know, they started out at three times a week mm -hmm. at 70, 80 bucks a session. Right. They went to twice a week after a couple of months and then once a week, and then they gradually got down to once a month. Um, some of them, the results were, were mixed. And then in every case that I know of, when they stopped, the benefits were lost. It's gone. So it's a life process. It won't ever. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying these exercises are any better. Right. That you There's may, you in order for me to focus, on, so. well, yeah, that you don't have to pay 70 right. bucks you know, to, to, it, it's an hour to juggle. Yes. Yes. Right, right. Yeah. So so that's, that's a big part of why I like my, my program is because I teach somebody to do this, and, and I may not get rich on it, but, but they can just go home and do it. Right. They don't need to pay me 70 bucks an hour to go home and juggle. Right. They don't need to bring their kids to the learning center five days a week, in most cases. Right. In some cases, with the younger kids, they're not going to work well with the parent for that length of time. Right. So for a short burst, you may do every day for a week or, or you right. know, three times a week for get a the month. Routine down, get the whole... But once it becomes natural and a habit, then they can go home and do it. And if you get really good, then you can do the alphabet. You know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So you're starting to think while you're juggling. Next or you do it backwards. Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M. Yeah, see, I can't do that. Okay, J, I, H, kills me when they do that as a sobriety test. Well, I cannot do that sober. How do they expect a drunk person to do that? I don't understand. Well, you know, when when they, like, have you go back and forth with your eyes? They can actually yeah. tell your blood alcohol content by how many skips you make your eyes Wavering, make. Wavering, yeah. 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 They, I can't they can actually calculate line. that. They're I can't do any sobriety test sober. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm like, just give me a breathalyzer because you know what? You're going to think I'm drunk otherwise. Yeah, but see, you like, practice all these exercises. I know, I'm just going to whip out these juggle like, of both of them. Oh, you know? say the alphabet backwards. <laughs> okay, Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M. <laughs> they asked you to see the alphabet backwards. Hey, what if I could do that? Walk, walk, the red line, walk the red line backwards. Z Y X W B U T S R Q B. Wow. Yeah, can't do that. <laughs> I had enough trouble just doing our little clap thing backwards. <laughs> or pi 3.1415926535899323846 Oh two eight eight four one nine seven one six nine three nine nine three seven five one zero five eight two. Okay, the counting okay, does help me. You're right. Faster. That helps a lot. Very good. Because it's distracting your brain, so well, you're not so focused. Too, and then so once, once you've got now here, let me. I don't recommend this. I don't really. It's not my favorite thing. But for some kids, some younger kids, I will have them do what what we call just a toss and switch, and I'll have them do like this. Now, this is kind of a step backwards from, from full-on juggling, but I want them to be successful, so what I'll have them do is toss and switch. That's how I had to start. <laughs> right. Now, even for some kids, that's going to be a problem. And don't ask me why this works. I have no idea, but I know it does. You put one hand behind your back, you toss, and then 
And for some reason, that works. It, it, it'll get them going. But ultimately, we want to get to the toss, toss, catch, catch. With our focus up here, our focus is up. Focus is up, chin up. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. You know, the, you, you literally, Good girl. You, change the chemi you can change the chemistry of your brain by bringing your chin from here to here. The difference between being slightly below horizontal, having your chin like here, or having your chin here, whatever chin looks like, um, it literally changes the chemistry of your brain. Very cool stuff. So again, we, we it's like another layer to the exercise. We're keeping our chin up. Hey. So the last step, after we've gotten our toss, toss, catch, catch, the last step is going to be we're going to put one ball up here. Now you know which hand you always start with, right? Which hand do you always start with? Right. 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 You start with your right. Okay. <laughs> Put one ball up here, your thumb and two finger. Take the other one and down there. Okay? And now we're going to do the same thing. Well, I'm thinking one, two, three. One, two, three. Toss, toss, toss. When you're getting ready to catch it in this hand, you roll the one that's already there up to the front and catch it in the back part of your hand. And then you just keep cycling it like oh. that. No, you don't have, no, 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 it's nothing that complicated. But that is what you're doing. I know, because you just... <laughs> See, watch, watch my hand, watch my hand. I'm not, I'm just going to go one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Toss, toss, toss. I'm just letting it go. Can I get that one? Toss, toss, toss. <gasps> Thank you. One, Good job. two, three. Toss, toss, toss. Before that, when that one lands, kind of thing, you just keep it going. You're juggling. <laughs> Took me a long time to even come close to being able to switch them out because I think about it too much. I mean, yeah. So this is so important because when we are in that sympathetic mode, in addition to all the physiological stuff that's going on, which is getting us rocking back and forth in our chair and wanting to move around and, and really be hyper alert, mentally, it does those two, those two really, cri really critical things. Um, one, it disconnects the left brain which is, you know, that's, that's what provides the order and sequence to learning, the organization to my memories. So the left brain is disconnected. Listening, verbal to instructions or whatever, that's disconnected for the most part. And my right brain, which should be like, I'm a visual learner, right? So this is, the, this is right here, this is the paradox. You say, my son's a visual learner, but he doesn't learn visually. What's wrong with that? Well, I taught him visually, but he still doesn't learn. Okay? In fact, I've had ADD kids get described as auditory learners. And I, and I just keep my peace uh, on, until I have a better ground for communication. But, but literally, because they're so shut off, they'll, they'll, they may even get identified as auditory learners. Because what happens when we're in our sympathetic mode that fight or flight mode, that puzzle solving mode, my brain is in, call it random access mode. And what it's doing is it, is it gets a little picture here, and that triggers a picture over here, and that triggers a picture over here, and that triggers a picture over here, and that picture, and so I'm dancing all through my memories and my experiences and pulling out bits and pieces here and there, trying to work through some problem, trying to create a, a solution to the immediate environmental concern or the survival concern. So what would an example of that be? I don't know if everyone's like this, but I know like when I'm laying in bed and trying to fall asleep, 
Mm -hmm. My brain will do something similar to that, like I'll be thinking of one thing, which then that'll jump me over to this thing, which will jump me to this thing. Is it kind of like that for them during yes. the day? I mean, all the time. Like... That's the way it is all the time. Okay. That's the way it is. Now, and remember too, unless you, well, remember this is happening at 30 plus images per second. Right. Okay? Unless something persists in our senses for more than 1 25th of a second, it will not be perceived at the conscious level. It will be perceived at the unconscious or subliminal level, but not consciously. Maybe some people may remember years ago, and they outlawed this, They in the movie theater, the they, would, they would flash, like for one frame, Coca-Cola, popcorn. Uh -huh. And everybody run out at intermission and go buy Coca-Cola and popcorn. And they outlawed that, because it's, you know. Brainwashing. It's brainwashing, basically. <laughs> So, the same thing's true in our internal thought. Those thoughts that are flying by, those images that are flying at 30 images per second, they're going to be perceived only at the unconscious level. If we pause for a moment and hold that image for, you know, even a fraction of a second, we will be internally aware of it, or externally or consciously aware of it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But for the most part, that whole thing is an unconscious process. Right. So... The left brain shut down. The right brain is off doing this little survival dance, right? This un, this uh, uh, random access mode or puzzle solving mode. What's left to actually store in memory whatever is going on in the classroom? Nothing, nothing. The whole brain is occupied. So. This, this stress reduction is critical to our success in the classroom, in, the, in any learning environment. It's critical. We need to get these two connected to each other. So we've got, we're, we're going to learn to use our visual memory, and it's going to be organized using the left brain so that we can find the memories again. <laughs> Very useful at test time, okay, to be able to find, the, find what we store. But... To get our right brain in, in the game, we need to step out of that sympathetic mode, step out of that puzzle solving mode, and turn our mental process into basically a movie. So, so it's, it's a sequential visual experience, not random access puzzle solving. Does that make sense? That's, that's key. Now, we not only have this awesome, you know, ability to process information a thousand times faster than, than you know, your teacher can talk, we can now, we now have control over it. We can use it. it. We can close our eyes and hold that image or, or whatever, hold it steady for the magic number five to seven seconds. Now, this may seem not, not seem like a long time to quote normal people. But if you're processing images at 30 plus per second, five seconds, that's 150 images. That's like for an ADD, ADT, that's like a lifetime. That's, that's, that's like, whew, wow. So does that make sense? 150 images, hold them steady. That's a big shift from this, from one image every 30th of a second, dancing around. So this stress reduction exercise, this, this initial part of the program, right here, relax and focus. This is like at the core of every, basically everything else we're gonna do. Everything, almost. Um, yes. So how's everybody doing? Fun? Okay, so let's take a break on the, uh, the uh, balloons and the juggling for a little bit. Any questions so far? Cross crawls, juggling, balloons. We're good? Everything? Yes? I'd like to hear more of the why. Why? Yeah. I know what it what you're doing and how we're doing it. 
Okay, um, I think I just said that, but let me try it again. So the cross curling, okay, and the juggling, okay, it all starts in with with the first thing, the first benefit. Number one, using the left brain, right brain, left side, right side of the body, what we do is we kind of force, if you will, in a very nice, respectful way, <laughs> we encourage the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain to co-process information. They talk to each other. They're coordinating at the same time. My left and my right hand are, are going at the same time. Notice they're not in sequence, they're not, in, they're not synchronized though, they're, they're out of sync. So, so there's a lot of communication and processing that's going on. Same thing here, left and right. It's like your brain's got to work to make that happen in a very particular way. So, so that's, that's one of the first things that's, that's going to happen. And the left brain, which is like the moderator, the Henry Kissinger of the brain, if you will. It's like, chill out. You know, there's no, just, just, it's like a, it's like a filter. It's, it's like, um, it's like a governor. It just takes all these, these blasts of thoughts and it kind of slows them down to a, a, a palatable pace. So are you getting, okay, because you know they're mostly right side. Is the right side that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right Mostly side. Mostly right side. So when they do these exercises, it gets the two sides working together and it activates the left side so that it's not just sitting there asleep the whole time. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. And the popular new term for that on the internet is called brain balancing. This is basically what they're talking about. Um, you can spend $15,000 a month at Brainasium, mm -hmm. okay? Or $15,000 for six months or something, $14,000 for six months. And this is what they do for the most part. They give them exercises and rolling and tumbling. Um, there's a couple other things that are happening, which we'll get into in a minute. Um, but, but a big part of it is left and right brain, left, right brain, together. Is that good? Well, I understand that it helps the brains uh, work together. But the advantage, again, to the left side is that what? It slows it down. It, yeah, well, it think helps about. you record memories? Not directly yet with what we're doing. It opens the door to slow things down and, and then record memories more effectively. So right now we're just opening the door. We haven't done anything with learning yet. This stress reduction and um, brain balancing, if you will, is, is just to open the door to what comes later. To a different way of thinking. So it's changing from the, the dominant of the sympathetic to the parasympathetic or balancing both? Yes. And that's how it reduces the stress? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, remember that when we're, when we're in the sympathetic mode, we're looking at individual things. We're, par you know, uh, binocular vision and we're spot, fight or flight. How, speed and distance. How far away is it? Is it a threat? Am I dinner or am I eating? It's one of those two things. Okay? You know, neurologically, genetically. Um, so by ignoring my hands, by ignoring everything going on around me and focusing on this little dot, whether it's on the wall or, or up in here in space, now try to focus and follow one of the balls. I mean, try to juggle and focus on one ball at a time. You can't do it. You got to let it go. You have to let go. See? So that's a big thing for us. Big thing for us. It's letting go of that, that individual control and seeing the big picture. Um, not too long ago, I was driving along. I got a phone call. I was like, oh, gosh. All right, now I'm all stressed out. Okay, what can I do? I'm driving. Oh, I know. I'll pretend I'm juggling. <laughs> I went, there was no cars around. So I was like... <laughs> I was like, I, would, I don't recommend this, okay? Um, but I was like, um, I was like, okay. And I just imagined the balls going. And I was like, oh, cool. All right, I'm good. Yeah. 
guess it's okay for an older, really experienced driver. <laughs> no, no, I'm not advocating that. Never, <laughs> never <laughs> pretend to juggle uh, uh, while you're driving. Um, wait till Steering you stop. Pull over to the right, side. Left, right. It's all <laughs> pull over to the side, and, and then you can pretend you're juggling. <laughs> But it's the same thing. So there's a lot of ways to accomplish it. What I'm giving you is some, some ones that we found really effective, really fast. Um, they have different levels, so you can take any child at any level, bring them along, bring them along, so they can be successful, 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 successful. Okay. Is that answering it? Okay. Now, the nice thing is, um, as we, um, let's see, living routine. Did I do the learning state yet? No. Didn't do the learning state yet. Boy, where is that? That's learning state. Oh, there it is, back there. I'm not sure why I left it back there. Rhythm and routine. Um, oh, because I put it under focus and attention. Okay.